This video is all about the Frost Bear, giving you everything you need to know about the best skills, which heroes to pair with, and which attributes are the most important. So stick around in this video for a pet clinic, giving you all the critical information on the Frost Bear. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Just Cool Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Call of Dragons. And I aspire to make a guide about every single pet walking through the things you need to know. And today's guide is about the Frost Bear because it is a really solid pet for a Madeline March. That's right, Madeline is the one and only hero that I would really recommend for the Frost Bear at the time of this recording. So let's walk through why that is. Now, if you're newer to pets, you may not know that the talent skill is something that you can catch only, uh, or you could transfer it if you have it on one frost bear. You could put it onto another frost bear. You can't buy it from the store, um, and this is important because the talent skill defines what the pet is going to do for you. Without a talent skill, the pets are okay, but really not all that impressive. You just get rid of them. And I'll explain the exception to that a little bit later in the video. So for the Frost Bear, the talent skill, your Legion gains primitive strike upon gaining a shield. 40% chance to deal damage to the target Legion on being hit by a normal attack for five seconds. Your War Pet skill damage is physical. It's a damage factor of 1.6% times your shield modified by your strength. So what exactly is this doing? From what I can tell in the logs and by going and battling against dark creatures and, and battling for sort of superior chests and watching multiple things hit me at once, this basically is a chance to do damage to a bunch of things that are hitting you all on the same turn. So this could trigger three, four, five, or more times in a single turn. So if you're getting hit by a lot of things, it's basically making it so you do a bunch of damage back out. And that happens after you make a shield. Okay, well, there's lots of ways to make shields. Some of them are better than others. And I will argue the best way to get a shield in Call of Dragons is actually from Madeline. Not a coincidence that I have this on Madeline, right? So her active skill gives you a 1200 shield factor. Now, there is another hero that will give you a shield. So theoretically, you also could get a lot of value out of Thea as a use for this. Thea has a 1,000 shield factor. I just don't think it's quite as good. I mean, obviously, it's 200 factor less. The lower factor your shield, the less strength of the damage you'll deal to the people that are hitting you. So the other thing is that Thea is really not yet designed to be tanking. So Madeline is. That's why I think Madeline is a great fit. Also, Eliana uses shields, but this shield synergy is much lower. Now you have only a 500 shield factor. And at that point, I'm pretty unimpressed. You could use it on Eliana. It's just that the damage is going to be way lower because your shield is way lower. The other way you can get a shield, by the way, is through some small amount of talents. And also there are pet skills that make a shield. But remember, if we get a look back at this bear... The amount of damage you're going to deal is based off of your shield strength. So, yeah, there's a pet skill that will give you a small chance of getting a tiny shield. But, like, bro, that doesn't matter because your damage is just a tiny fraction of that compared to, you know, uh, what you would get if you had a big, big shield. So, hopefully I've convinced you that Madeline is the pairing. But then, what are the skills that you should use? And I think the obvious synergy for a tank is to make yourself do as much damage as possible to the enemy and to make yourself mitigate as much damage as possible. Now, this pet is less about mitigation. Obviously, the talent skill is more about damage. So one very obvious synergy here is the Counter-Strike skill. The Counter-Strike skill makes it so that when you're hit with a normal attack, you have a 50% chance to deal damage to the attacker. You're going to do counterattack damage. So whatever your counterattack damage number is, I think it just goes up by a small amount. Pretty cool. But the other thing I would put onto this is wild counterstrike. So when you cast counterstrike, now you're going to do pet skill damage factor of four. I know it's a small number <laughs> based on your agility. Back to the thing that targeted you. So 
The way that this works is that wild Counter-Strike only does anything if you have Counter-Strike deployed. So when Counter-Strike triggers, which is a 50% chance when you're being normal attacked, um, there is a 100% chance when it triggers that you'll also now do some skill damage back, which is pretty cool. So I like the wild Counter-Strike combo. So you've got Frost Armor, Counter-Strike, wild Counter-Strike, and the next skill that we need to talk about is Enduring Frost Armor. This one is really expensive. It's one of the more expensive skills that you can get. And what does this do? It increases the duration of your Frost Armor's Primitive Strike effect by one second for every 200 points of Endurance. So if you look at my pet here, I have 229 Endurance. This is determined based off of the level of the pet, the base stat on the pet, uh, pet shown on the left, and the growth rate shown on the right. The growth rate over here is a multiplier off of your level. An oversimplification, but gets the point across, right? So because I have over 200 endurance on this pet, now I get one extra second of my frost armor. So now it does this for six seconds, which is pretty good. I would ideally like to get, you know, two, uh, ideally two extra seconds of duration, but I can't get that. So for a skill like enduring frost armor, you really want to look at the break point. What does that mean? Well, I realized that on my pet, if I wanted to get a level one, or actually this is a level zero, enduring frost armor, I was never going to get to 250 endurance on this pet that I have. I mean, unless I do a bunch of rejuvenate potions and I get really lucky. So I knew that I needed to do a one star. And as I mentioned, this is some of the more expensive skills here. So you can see over here, the one star requires 200 endurance. So I knew I would have more than that. If I really wanted to spend a lot, I could get the two star. But if you look at it, the two star, which is right over here, Enduring Frost Armor, increases the duration or extends the duration for every 150 points of endurance. Well, wait a minute. This pet was never going to get over 300 endurance unless I reju you know, rejuvenated a bunch and get really lucky. So this would actually do the exact same thing as the one star version. So the point is, you got to look for the break point on abilities that say you need at least X amount of a stat in order to get a benefit. Because if you have less than 200 endurance, this skill actually does nothing. It does literally nothing until you have over 200 endurance, okay? Um, and then over 400 endurance would give you another a second. 600 endurance, which is not possible, uh, would give you three seconds, but you get the idea. So from here, I really wanted to make my pet more tanky. So the skill that I went with is called Bristles. Bristles is an enemy legion attack mitigation. Yes, I want to mitigate the enemy's attack to make myself more tanky. Seems amazing. So at this point, we've got really five core skills that I think are great on the Frostbear. I also happen to have this skill, a chance to dispel a debuff, which I think is fine. Um, but I'm not sure what else I would put onto this pet other than these core five skills. There are a few things that would be fine, like Great Care gives you a heal. I guess that could be fine. Um, we already have three endurance-based skills, so I can't have any more of those at this point. I could have gone for Tough Counter-Strike, which makes it so I take less pet skill damage. But again, I already have three endurance skills, and you can only have three total. Any beyond that don't do anything. So that's kind of out of the question. You could go for things that elevate your uh, counterattack crit chance, which I think is pretty good because you're trying to do a lot of counterattack on a Madeline March. So I think hit back would be a good choice. But there aren't a ton of other things that really excite me. Not without getting into some of the like really, really rare, hard to obtain uh, skills. Like, for example, you could go for Outbursts of Rage. This is a super rare one. I think you can only get it through maybe end of season rewards and maybe from a lucky draw from the sort of pet draws. So there's a, you know, a 10% chance to gain extra rage is amazing. Like, yes, obviously that's very good. You would want to get that. Um, but otherwise, I don't know that there are a ton of skills that I'm even all that hyped about. Um, you could get robust body if you're lucky and increase your legion hit points.
But some of these things are kind of based off of attributes that are not very high on your pet anyways. Um, here is super follow-up, but that's unrelated. Um, yeah, I, I, honestly, there aren't as many skills on the Frost Bear that I'm overly hyped about. I suppose you could go for, you know, uh, Angry Roar, increasing the damage you deal when your pet deals physical skill damage. But let's just look for a second at where you're dealing skill damage. You have the Frost Armor that deals skill damage, and you have the Wild Counter-Strike dealing skill damage. So you could go for Angry Roar, I suppose. And that puts you in a pretty good spot. Um, there's also Super Frost Armor, which gives you a higher chance of inflicting damage. So if we sum up what are the eight skills that I think go onto this pet, let me walk through it real quick. I think you take Frost Armor, Counter-Strike, and Wild Counter-Strike. I also really like Bristles. I'm very happy with all these choices. Enduring Frost Armor seems critical for extending the duration of the Frost Armor effect. I think if you could get your hands on Super Frost Armor, I think it's kind of rare, that's six skills. I like Outbursts of Rage, although does your infantry really need more rage compared to other heroes? I mean, if you're getting focused, you'll have plenty of rage. So we'll skip that one and instead go for Blood for Blood. Increases your crit rate when you are doing counterattack damage. That seems really good. And the final skill would, I suppose, be either Angry Roar, or I believe there's one more similar skill. Um, Blood Roar does basically the same thing. Increasing your crit rate, just a very small amount. Um, that final skill, I mean, you just have a lot of flexibility for the sorts of things you might want to do. Um, you could do Interruption, I suppose. Uh, you know, you got you got a few options here. So the one skill I would not do, as I mentioned earlier, is Heart Wall. This shield is such a small shield, it kind of doesn't matter. It doesn't do much synergy with the Frost Armor because that is based off of the shield strength and the shield strength here is really small. So um, also I just want to point out that you would not do Dauntless. This increases War Pet shield skill effects. Um, and you're not really doing shields on your pet. This pet isn't doing shield effects. It, it's it's doing damage based off of your hero's shields. So I don't think this would improve your Madeline shield. If it did, it would be OP. That would be insane. But I don't think that's what that does. So that covers what I think you should use on the Frost Bear. So what attributes are good on a Frost Bear? What do you want? Well, obviously, strength is critical because your first skill is Frost Armor. But then it's all about endurance and agility for the overwhelming majority of your other skills. So endurance, you can see I have at the A tier. Ideally, that would be S. And agility would ideally be S. Uh, the intelligence, spirit, and luck, you shouldn't do too much with those skills. There were a couple we called out, but it's really all about that strength, agility, endurance combo. And in summary, I would say the Frost Bear is more about dealing damage than mitigating it. And there are other pets like the Stripe Bear, aka the Creamsicle Bear, that actually is more tanky. But we'll talk about the Stripe Bear in another video. If you enjoyed this one, throw a like on here and consider subscribing. My last pet clinic was about the Snow Peak Rock. I'll have a card in the end screen for that. Alternatively, if you're just looking for some general pet guidance, I'll have an overview of the pet system card in the end screen in just a second.